Greetings YouTube friends, welcome to Props and Wheels. We are halfway through our Props and Wheels 10 day mini drone review challenge. And on our 6 days, I'll be reviewing this Hobson X4 Can Plus mini camera drone. This is also known as H107C Plus, that's the item code. And this is by far the largest package I have seen in any mini drones. I'm not even sure if it's a mini drone. I bought it as a mini drone and this has been sitting in my storage for a while. I purchased this through eBay back in October. Whenever I find these kind of really good deals, I jump on them and buy them just to be reviewed later. And this was one of them. And it cost me $20.99, that was the price. With free shipping, with the tax, it ended up being $22.30 shipped to my door. Let's see if it is going to be as good as yesterday's Holly Stone. So here it is folks, not much inside, very compact, large package. The controller looks very nice and solid, look at the size, it looks like a game controller and it has even a small LCD screen. And let's open it up and see how many batteries it takes, it looks like two or three AA batteries but I may be wrong. So it takes actually four AAA batteries. The Holly Stone yesterday only took two AA batteries. Let's turn it on. Here it is. It's that little LCD screen. I don't think it's backlit. I don't see any light. Let's turn it off. Let's continue. What do we have in the little hardware package? A prop remover tool. This is for safely removing the propellers without breaking anything. If you are pulling with your fingers, that's difficult. So this just gives you leverage and also one set of spare propellers. It may come in handy if you crash this somewhere. And this did not come with any of the protectors, so I don't have anything else in the box. Uh, there may be an option to buy these prop pro protectors. Yeah, it would have been nice if they included that. This didn't come with it. But hey, look at the price, really. It's very basic. Here we have a proprietary battery. Unfortunately, it only came with one battery, but I'm sure I should be able to find more batteries, although they will be expensive because they are proprietary. 3.7 volts, one cell, and this is 520 milliamp hour battery. I'm going to start charging the battery here. Okay, <laughs> it is on the side here. <laughs> I was not looking in the right place. So, unfortunately, the battery has to be in the drone to be able to charge. Uh, that's, a, that's a minus in my opinion. The reason is if you have multiple batteries you want to be able to charge them while you are flying. Maybe you have one of those uh, power banks you know, with the USB outlet on the field and you want to be able to charge the depleted batteries while you are flying with the fresh batteries. And you cannot do that because the battery needs to be inside the drone. So that's a minus. I wish they made the battery so that you just directly connect to the, to the charger. Now what I'm going to do is while I'm going to continue charging the battery, I'm going to quickly read the manual and get back to see what I need to download in my phone in order to be able to operate the camera. It has been almost an hour and it is still charging. The instruction manual says it takes 80 minutes to charge fully charged and it has seven minutes of flight time. Okay, a couple things to point out. First of all, this came in mode two, but you can switch it to mode one, meaning that throttle will go to the right and then the elevator will go to the left. Uh, when I turn it on, you know, the sticks do not show like the trimming and anything. It just says M2, which is mode two. And in the manual, it explains how to do the transmitter stick calibration, meaning that, you know, finding the maximums and the center of the sticks. And there is one for mode two and one for mode one. If you follow the directions for mode one, as shown here, I'm assuming it's also going to swap this 
transmitter to mode 1. So I'm going to do it for mode 2, show how to do it. So at first you start with both sticks on the upper left hand corner like that and while you're keeping it there, you turn on transmitter and you let go, things are blinking and you do complete two circles with the sticks like that and then with the other one as well and once you're finished you press one of the trim buttons and there should be an LED blinking that it has been calibrated maybe long press okay it stopped and I'm not sure it must be calibrated it doesn't say anything and you see I, I hold down and then the transmitter blinks red and I don't see any LEDs that can blink but this blinking inside the LCD screen stops so I'm assuming now everything is calibrated and then the other thing is this does not have an app because it doesn't send the videos and photos to the phone it doesn't have a phone app what, what it does have is an micro SD slot here so this is a good thing and a bad thing first of all it's a good thing because it will be saving all the photos and videos directly to the micro SD card let me put that in this is a micro SD card that I am I putting it in the correct orientation it should be yeah this I just don't want to okay it went in it's sitting in the good thing is that it will be saving directly onto the micro SD card and if you have seen the video of the Hollystone HS370 yesterday of this one uh, this direct it doesn't have an SD micro SD card it sends all the videos photos to the phone and there were dropped frames especially when the drone was away from me you know the transmission wasn't that good and the video was choppy so I'm expecting the video will be much smoother on this one at full 30 frames per second so the micro SD is in there right now and you can start the recording once you turn on the the drone there should be a button it says on the side to start the recording there is this power button but I'm not sure if that's the button to start the video recording once I bind it uh, to the transmitter I will try it, test it out and when it's uh, recording the video the the lights are sp uh, supposed to be blinking the, the, I think the, the ones on the back I'm, I'm assuming, we'll see and then the there is no gyro calibration and also there are not too many buttons on this one and none of them are labeled the two buttons that are for photo and video they were not labeled so I put my own labels on the other hand the Hollystone transmitter had all the different buttons and they were clearly labeled so everything was labeled it was very easy to figure out what it is so there is a headless mode and to switch to the headless mode you press down the throttle stick like this inward not up down like just inward and clicks and when it is in the headless mode that will indicate it with two beeps and press again and there will be one beep and it's back to the normal mode and then in order to start this and stop the motors you have to pull both sticks down and out like this and then do it again and it will stop it so this is kind of like the safety feature there are some advanced performance setups uh, such as uh, for example sensitivity just adjusting the sensitivity I'm not going to go into that uh, there are a lot of these like clicks and moving the sticks and which is kind of confusing you have to really follow the instruction manual for that but there's one thing that is important which is the normal and expert flight mode so normal mode is basically the slow flying mode expert mode is the higher uh, speed mode and then to switch that you press the elevator stick to, to engage that so on mode 2 like this one you press in this one once and it will be uh, in the you know, it will give two beeps meaning that it is in the expert mode and then you press again it will beep one time and it will be normal mode so I wish you know they were buttons for these it will make life so much easier and for flips 
you press and hold down the throttle stick for a couple of, like one second. Within that two seconds, you can move the right stick up, you know, any direction, it will flip in that direction. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, it's still charging, but I want to show everything. And then the funny thing about this one is, you turn the transmitter on first. There is no gyro calibration. It needs to be, you know, once turned on, you put it on a flat surface, and within a second, it calibrates the gyro. And if you, you know, land it quickly or crash, you know, you put it down and leave it a couple seconds and the, the gyro, you know, once the throttle stick is all the way down, the gyro will uh, calibrate. So let's turn this one on. And the on switch is on the side. Press a couple seconds, the lights came on. Are they on? Maybe I should have keep pressing until Okay, maybe a longer press. All right. Okay, so it, it looks like it is bound. I'm going to just start the motors and stop it. This is not a throttle control. This is an altitude control because this drone is an altitude hold mini drone with a barometer, meaning that this sticks only controls increasing the altitude and decreasing the altitude. By the way, now it's bound. You know, you can see the stick movements over here and then trims. And it also has trims for all three, you know, the full right stick and also the rotation on the left stick. Those are the trim buttons. And it also says that you can start recording the video by pressing this button, I think once. Let's It doesn't look like it is blinking or anything. Also, it makes sense to take this little protector off so you don't see a blurry image. So, I mean, it says there is a button on the side. I don't see anything except that on off button. Am I missing something? And I press that. If I press it long, it's going to turn it off. So I don't see anything blinking. Anyway, let's try taking a photo. Of course, I cannot see where it's pointing because it's not connected to, to my phone. So I press once and these lights should blink once. Maybe the ones on the back bl blinked. Okay, let's start a video. Now these lights are blinking back and forth. So I'm assuming it is recording a video. Let's press it again. Let's see, this is going to stop and they stop blinking. Let's take another picture and we will see if this is going to blink on the back one time. Yeah, they blink once. Okay, so it seems to be working. What is next? Well, let's do a flight test indoors. By the way, the lights in the front and back look beautiful and very bright. I think this will be very easy to fly at night. You can tell which way it is flying, it's perfect. So let's start flying. So if I push the throttle stick or which is the ascent or altitude increase, no, nothing happens. So we have to unlock the motors. So it is unlocked. So do they turn themselves off after a couple seconds? Hmm, not so far, so let's... Okay, it's drifting a little bit. It keeps gaining out. I'm not sure why. It almost uh, looks like the throttle stick is not centered because do you see I'm it is in, increasing the altitude if I let go and I have to I have to like, keep pulling it down. If I let go, it's just... And it's not landing. Okay, this is not good. I'm trying to land now. Now it has stabilized, but now it's going down. It, it is refused. Whoa. 
That's not good. I cannot turn it off. Right. I turn off the transmitter. This is not good. Do the binding again because that wasn't a good thing. So let's turn this one off. And let's again turn on the transmitter. I'm not going to do the calibration or the uh, you know, centering of the sticks. Maybe I should do it. I'm not sure. But I thought it was done well. So a couple seconds long press, everything turns on. This should be calibrating gyro right now. It is stable, so the lights are back on, steady. Let's take off again. Yeah, um, it is drifting a little bit. In terms of altitude. But how do I land? I mean, did I miss something in the manual? Okay, now it landed. Before, before it was just landing and jumping back up. Maybe it was not centered and it was, it thought I, I'm not all the way down in terms of the throttle. And by the way, I, I extended it a flip last time because I was probably from excitement pressing on one of the sticks. Okay, so I'm going to now start the video. So it, it is taking the video right now and start the motors. Let's rotate it around and altitude hold is not that good. Let's bring it a little closer to me. Uh, oh, it's almost hit the ceiling. It just keeps... Okay, that wasn't that good. It was drifting too much. It is definitely not on par with the Holystone. Holystone was so much easier to fly and it did in these kind of things. So, so it is, it is not happy because it crashed. The gyro needs calibration. I don't even know if it is uh, still videotaping, so I'm just going to press this. Nothing happened. I don't know if it, I cannot even tell because I don't see it on my, on my phone. It doesn't have a phone now. So let's do this again. Third time is the charm. Turn on the transmitter. Turning on the drone. That wasn't very good. No. So it should be stable now, right? Everything is good. Again, I'm going to start videotaping. So let's unlock the motors. I don't know why that, that's blinking, is that, I think that's the battery thing. But I want to try the expert mode. So, so this is the faster mode. Oh, the battery's dead. That was pretty good. I mean, I, I charged over one hour. It wasn't completely charged, but I wasn't expecting such a short flight. So far, I'm not really impressed. It is unfortunate. It is charging again. And during one of those uh, interactions with the wall, uh, I damaged the tips of one of the propellers. It should be still fine. It's, I probably I don't have to replace it, but it is unfortunate. I mean, I felt like I'm fighting it instead of I'm flying it. It was all over the place. I mean, compared so Hollystone, I mean, it was hands off. It was easy. It was gentle. Everything was in place. I wasn't trying to figure out what is what on the transmitter. I was not overwhelmed. Uh, it just was helping me to fly it. You know, this is definitely a better camera drone, although it doesn't have the micro SD card. It has the module battery that you can charge separately. It came with two charging cables and all that. In terms of size, Hubson is a little larger. If you look here, like that, side by side, as you can see, when I 
put the legs together this one is a little longer in both orientate in both directions so this is slightly larger a little heavier feels like it doesn't have unfortunately the protectors that's what if I had protectors I would have put them on indoors and it would have protected the prop that's a shame that didn't come I mean it doesn't cost much to put four protectors for this it should have had those so far definitely not as good as the Hollystone HS370 but I'm going to keep my judgment until the end you know full judgment until I have a chance to fly it outside outdoors and I'm really curious about the video quality and I hope it was saving into this uh, micro SD card we will see we are out in the local park it is nice it is not 7 p.m. yet there is some breeze about 8 miles per hour that's what my phone app says weather app says and I fully charged the battery for the Hobson and I also <laughs> labeled all the buttons because I cannot remember what is what I probably have to put a couple more but I'm going to test it out now and hopefully I'll be uh, testing all the functions and hopefully it will do well because I really want it to do well I'm going to also start the video the indoor videos seemed fine I quickly looked at them on my computer they look definitely better than the Holystone HS370 because those were directly sent to my phone this will be uh, saving on the S micro SD card so let's get started okay to arm the motor started let's go up and the speed is this one so two more two clicks so now it's flying I'm going to start the video so the backlights are now moving I'm going to put it to headless mode so this should be in the headless mode if I turn it like that no yeah it's okay I'm going to take it out of the headless mode I, I cannot do this so let's bring it back I don't know how the video is looking yeah the, the wind is trying to take it and then the uh, I am uh, the barometer is not working well the altimeter is not or oh, artitude hold is not working well it just keeps going I'm, I'm bringing it down and then when I'm flying it keeps going up and it's a uh, unfortunately it doesn't have a trim so it's it's going up and down I think no now it's going down I don't know if it is uh, feeling the small perturbations do you see I, I, I'm trying to bring it back down and then keeps keeps going up uh, I'm, I'm not very happy not really I mean this may do better probably on a calmer day but I mean I'm constantly trying to getting down it probably also need trimming for the rotation it keeps turning left let's do the a little bit of trimming yeah it keeps going up that's the worst that can happen I mean I wish it will be going down and I'm constantly trying to keep it up because if it goes up too much in the wind with someone who is not good in, good in drones don't doesn't know how to fly them you know it's going to cause issues like it keeps going up so now I'm going to try to land it because this is not going well okay I'm not sure if I should just leave it in for a couple seconds so it does everything but okay let's see and it's I don't know if it's wind it's drifting towards left right now let's rotate it it's still yeah it is the wind I think how, how does the video look I'm not even sure doesn't want to stay in one location but I'm, I'm trying to keep it close to me 
so you can see my handsome face. <laughs> oh, too close, too close, buddy. Yeah, the, the wind is playing games at me. And let's try the headless mode again. So headless mode is this one. It took off this way, right? So if I rotate it and pull it towards me, it should come towards me, no matter where it is. Yeah, it is, the headless is kind of working because I want it to come this way. Yeah, come towards me and I'm pulling and then it's going forward. So if I now switch to headless mode off, it's going to go backwards. So I have to rotate it and then you know, bring it down or turn it around and then push it forward to bring it to me. But this altitude hold is not working well. By the way, I apologize about the sound quality of the outdoor videos in the last couple of videos. I think H A the Holystone HS370 had also some bad uh, sound and the reason is I started using my new Cam Park camera and the first time the sound came out to be terrible and I replaced it, the microphone with my older one and it still came out terrible. So I'm assuming it is the camera, not the microphone, so I switched back to my boy fun, my old boy fun, good trusty boy fun camera. It may not have as much resolution or sensitivity, but definitely better sound. Hopefully this video is sounding much better. Okay, is it still on the high mode? I don't know if I landed and let's press the for mode. Okay, so this is the slow mode and this is the fast mode. Not much difference between them. I mean, this is fast and this is slow, maybe a little slower. So again, fast mode. Yeah, it, it makes a difference, maybe twice as fast. But I like the Hollystone. It had three different modes and it was scooting pretty good in that high wind. It was taking it well. The altitude holds stabilized a little better, I think. But whenever it's, the wind picks up, it just goes hay haywire. It's going up again. So I keep bringing it down, it keeps going up. I keep bringing it down. So I'm going to keep flying until the battery gives out. And let me stop the video for a second. Is the video still going on? Yes. No, maybe not. Okay. Did the video start or stop? I'm not even sure at this point because the, the lights behind are just blinking. Let me try photo. It, it fell off. So the battery is done on this. The battery is done. So that means that fast flashing means the battery is low and I'm dying. Okay. Just in case it is still taking pictures, I'm going to play, press the photo button. It is still beeping and let's take, try taking another video. I don't know if it is uh, recording right now because there's no way to tell. The lights are blinking fast. If it is recording, I should probably stop it. Okay, folks, what is the final verdict? Well, I was looking at Amazon and right now the Hollystone HS370 is selling for about $50 and this one is selling for about $35. There's a price difference. Uh, the one advantage this has is it saves the video directly to the micro SD card. So that's a bonus. But in terms of performance, altitude hold, uh, ease of control and features, Hollystone trumps this one in every way. This didn't even come with the protectors for the propellers. I mean, Hollystone came with two batteries, two chargers, all the shebang. With that said, if you can get this one for $20 like I did, it was a little over $22 to tax, get it because it is a good deal, I think, to start a camera drone. It's a small one and you can fly indoors and probably because it's not that stable, it will teach you to control something that's not too stable. Also, this looks really nice. 
and it has the lights. I have, I didn't get the chance to test it at night, but at one point I'm going to try to fly it on a calm night when it's dark and see how it fares as a night flyer. So the sixth day is now over and tomorrow is a new day with a new mini drone. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.